Hey guys, so this is the overview for how to use the Quest Diagnostics um, test menu website for looking up your 100 most commonly ordered lab tests. So basically you are going to use the Quest website to look up the tube color that the lab test will be drawn in. So you have your lab test spreadsheet and you are going to go over to the website that's linked in Canvas. It is the Quest Diagnostics um, Test Center menu. And I'm going to show you how to look up a test. So let me click back over here. The first one is ALT, which is also known as SGPT. Um, and then we have albumin, alkaline phosphatase, a whole list of them, a hundred of them actually. So we'll go back over here to the test menu and we will type in ALT and see if it comes up with anything. So we click go Now you can see that there are a whole lot of things that have the words, the letters ALT in them. There are 500 tests. So in this case, since we know that ALT is also known as SGPT, we may want to try SGPT. And there we go. So SGPT comes up as alanine aminotransferase, otherwise known as ALT. And so here's how you're going to find out what tube color this test will be drawn into. So the very first time you log in, you may have to select a regional laboratory and it may prompt you to do so. If so, you want to select the one that's closest to you. On the front page, it has the test name, methodology, um, the spectrophotometry, the limitations, all kinds of um, clinical and scientific information here. The clinical significance for this test, it tells you what this test measures, what it does. Um, it is a liver test, and so it tells you everything um, about what this test is used for, generally speaking. And then to find the tube color, we want to click over on the ordering info tab. So we're going to check over there. My computer is so slow today. And I've already selected the regional laboratory as Sacramento because that is closest to us, or you can use San Jose since we are uh, East Bay area. But whatever you want to do, uh, Sac or San Jose or whatever's closest to you would be fine. And then I will show you how to get this information. So the things that we want to pay attention to here. Um, I only ask you to know the tube color, but it's not a bad idea if you have any hopes of working in a lab to make extra notations because this assignment, although it's an assignment for class, is more for your information than anything. So this is how you look for the tube color. Tells you the tube colors are actually listed here. Um, you can, the preferred specimen is always where, what you want to go for for tube color. So it tells you that the preferred specimen is one mil of serum, which means that you can use either a red tube, which produces serum, or an SST tube, which is noted here. So if you draw it in an SST tube, you can just leave it in this SST tube. Uh, which is what it says here, you can transport it in an SST tube. If you don't have any red or SST tubes available to you, you can also draw it in a sodium heparin green top tube or in a lithium heparin green top tube. So those are also available uh, options that are, or excuse me, those are options that are available to you if you don't have a red or an SST tube. So even though that's all you need to know for the assignment, just while you're looking these up, some other things that you can find in these uh, test menu guides uh, that is pretty important information. Serum and plasma stability of the specimen at room temperature, it's good for 72 hours, but if you throw it in the fridge, it's good for five days. However, if you freeze it, it's going to go bad. It's no good if it's frozen. 
Um, if it's drawn with any anticoagulant other than in a heparin tube, then you can't use it. So if you draw it up in a blue tube, it can't be used. If you draw it up in the um, PPT tubes, it can't be used. And then um, there's, again, some clinical significance information down there, alternative names here. So you already know that it has two names, but if you did not know that, you could find that information there. So let me get out of this really quickly. And we'll look up one more, and I'll show you um, information. Billy Rubin. So I want to look up a uh, total Billy Rubin. One of these days when my computer decides to go. So there is a number of Billy Rubin tests you can um, order. There is direct Billy, a fractionated Billy, a total and direct neonatal Billy. Uh, there's a urine Billy. We want to look up total Billy Rubin. Oh no, hold on. And we're back. So we've got the Billy Rubin total uh, brought up here. And again, we're going to go to ordering info. If it prompts you to select your location, then you want to select the regional lab that is closest to you. Again, here I've already pre-selected the Sacramento lab. So in looking at a total bilirubin, if I want to know what tube color, I look and I find um, that it says one mil serum here. And so I know that that means that I need to have um, red or SST. The minimum volume is always something important to look at if you do not uh, draw labs very often. So the minimum volume is one half of a mil of serum. So this is the thing that's important to know. And bilirubins get kind of finicky sometimes because, I mean, a lot of times you're drawing bilis on um, babies and it's hard to get blood out of babies sometimes. So like in this instance, you want to know that you have to have one half of a milliliter of bilirubin. Well, one mil of blood equals one half mil of serum. And you have to have one half of a mil of serum to run this test. So that's the minimum that you have to have. They prefer to have one mil of serum, a whole mil of serum, which means that you would need two mil of blood to get one mil of serum. But if it's a short draw or it's a hard stick, you can get by with just one mil of blood, which will give you one half of a mil of serum if that's the only test that you're running out of that tube. So you can learn all kinds of things from these test menu guides um, that is important for each of the labs that you're going to draw. So also, for example, down here, it tells you you want to transport at room temperature. You transport it in a spun SST tube. Um, the serum uh, can be transferred to an amber transport vial. If it's plasma from a sodium heparin or green top tube, um, you can use that as well. This is the thing here. The collection instructions are always important. It tells you that it has to be protected from light by wrapping the spun SST in foil or transferring the serum or plasma to an amber transport vial. So bilirubin is um, often tested when, on babies. And if a, a baby's um, uh, oh, well, jaundiced, then they sometimes they'll have to go into the lights. So we don't want to expose the blood that, the, that we're going to test for bilirubin levels to light because that obviously is going to alter the results. So those are things that are important to know. The collection um, information like protect from light. Sometimes you'll get things like ammonia that are required to go on ice and other things. So um, room temperature for 72 hours, refrigerator for 20, 72 hours. This one can be frozen for 90 days and it says here if it's protected from light. If it's not protected from light then the whole specimen's no good and it has to be withdrawn. So this is just a, a quick overview of how to use these um, 
test menu guides for to complete that 100 most commonly ordered test assignments that I have given you for this Medic 219 class. Um, if you have questions, then uh, let me know. Thanks, guys.